they could travel the speed of light, but the graphics suck. If I'm reading this right, this might be by Wackoff. Wackoff. Gotta watch how I say that. Everyone thinks that when they start trading, that they're gonna have an epiphany and then bam, you know, they're a trader all of a sudden. Well, it doesn't really work like that. It's a many little things that'll make you a successful trader. And that's what, as these things pop into my head, I make a note and we talk about them. So number 827,913, last two weeks ago at Bandcamp, I mentioned viewpoints of a commodity trade. And this that got me thinking about these little books these little old books. I've got a couple laying around my desk. This one is Psychology of the Stock Market. I'd recommend you read that. And uh, this one just randomly on my desk. And it's been a long time since I've read it, but I noticed it's got a lot of notes in it. Studies in Tape Reading by Rollo Tape. And I think that's a, what do you call that, a pen name? But anyway, uh, this is this is a great little book, and this is one that once I start quoting it, I can't stop. And so I just put a couple in here tonight. But this is something that if you go through this copy of mine, it's got like lots of dog ears and lots of notes. It's a great little book, and I think as I said before, it's like it's such a little book it gets lost in all this mess I have it here, and then I just keep buying a new copy. And then finally, I bought a um, Kindle version, <laughs> so that one doesn't get lost. Anyway, read The Psychology of the Stock Market by G.C. Selden. Selden. And what's amazing is, and I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself, but what's amazing is these books that were written well over 100 years ago, in some cases, it, it, there's nothing new under the sun. And even in Livermore's book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, he actually said there's nothing new under the sun when it comes to the markets. Well, there's nothing new under the sun. It goes all the way back to the Bible, and I think it was Ecclesiastes, okay? So what's amazing is you'll get a lot of good stuff out of these old, old books. Like I said before, I used to, like if my wife would go to bed early on a Friday or Saturday night, and I'd have a couple beers, I'd come in here <laughs> and search for, uh, speculation is a good thing to search for on eBay. You look for those old books. What do they call them? An old book antiquated, or I forget what they call them. But look in that category and you'll find a lot of good stuff. Um, I got it. My office is littered with them. I gave away all my new books. <laughs> and I, I kept all the old ones. Anyway, uh, just kind of some random quote, quotes from this book. Few persons are so introspective as to be able to tell where this bias in favor of their own interest begins and where it leaves off. Still fewer bother to make the effort to tell. So what's kind of fascinating is, and this is what I was getting to a second ago, is that G.C. Selden kind of talks about all this behavioral science and all this behavioral finance, and all the fancy words they call it today. And this was, again, at least 100 years ago, 19, early 1900s. So it's actually a public domain, by the way. You can go to davelandry.com slash books dash two dash read. And you could pick this one. It's only like five bucks. I think you can get it free on the internet, but I like having a hard copy. Humphrey Neal tape reading, 1930 maybe, had a ticker tape ribbon. Uh, yeah, that sounds that sounds interesting. I wonder if that's uh, I wonder if that's the same guy as Rolo tape. This is actually might be uh, Wyckoff. So this might be, if I'm reading this right, this might be by Wyckoff. Wyckoff. Gotta watch how I say that. <laughs> Gonna lose my uh, monetization of my video. If you're long or short of the market, you are not an unprejudiced judge, and you will be greatly tempted to put such an interpretation upon the current events as will coincide with your preconceived opinion. Lately, I've been doing some writing where it's kind of interesting. I'll write about something, then I'll read the same thing or something very similar to it a few days later. And lately, I've been writing, okay, what is the market doing and what do you want it to do? Okay, and it's easy to answer what is the market doing as long as it's doing what you want it to do, okay? It's when it's not, you find yourself thinking, oh, well, well, maybe it's just oversold or maybe it'll come back. And you might start confusing the issue with facts. But again, once you start quoting it, it, it I literally was just looking, kind of flipping through it. 
and I found this. The average man is an optimist regarding his own enterprises and a pessimist regarding those of others. Well, the first half of that is is kind of the beginning of the Dunning-Kruger effect, which I've talked about before. I hope I'm saying that right. And the second half is some other behavioral finance or behavioral science that's out there. And I'm kind of reminded of Annie Duke in one of her books, and it, it might be on how to decide. I, I really couldn't get into how to decide, but um, what's the other one? Thinking in bets is worth reading. Again, dayler.com slash books dash two dash read. And in that how to decide book, she did mention something that's kind of interesting. I think that was where she mentioned it. But anyway, it was Annie, I know it was Annie Duke. And it kind of makes a good example for this, what uh, Mr. Sheldon is saying. If you were to stand outside a church and as the bride and groom come out, a friend of mine was an alcoholic and uh, he's like, we're not going to this wedding. What we would do, he, he says, I'll show you what to do. So I was like, all right, fine. So we'd go to, we'd go to a bar that was nearby. And then right when the wedding was getting ready to let out, we'd, we'd go stand and let the doors open <laughs> and we'd be there to greet him and, you know, wait like, Hey, <laughs> so anyway, I digress. But the, um, if you were to stand there after going to the bar, you know, and, and you wait for them to come out, the bride and groom, and you say, real quick, what are your chances of this marriage not ending in a divorce? And they would, they would, if provided and punch in the face, they'd be like, oh, well, this marriage is going to be great. But if you ask that same couple, what are the chances of a marriage down the street that's happening at the same time? What's the chances of those people making it? And what would they tell you? Well, 50%. That's the that's the average. Okay. So that's kind of a kind of the way we kind of looked at things in kind of a twisted kind of way. And that's why I get so heavily into psychology. And I think one reason is because I'm plagued so heavily by trading psychology. And that's why I spent so much time working on it. If if you could just be completely flippant and do what has to be done then there's really no need for the psychology. And a lot of times I am pretty flippant. I'm getting better, okay? And that's one of the things that I probably should say as one of my many little things is be flippant, okay? Be flippant in your execution, but make sure you're picking the best and leaving the, and leaving the rest. But yeah, the psychology could be tough. And, and, you know, like one of my big epiphanies there was when I took uh, Jason Williams, I think that's his name, is Larry Williams' son, and uh, he wrote a, a pretty good book. And most of the book talks a lot about psychology tests. And I took a psychology test, and it, it turns out that I'm not very agreeable. <laughs> I scored like a zero in agreeableness, and my whole family was home one night when I came home from work. And I'm like, hey, can you guys believe this? And they looked at me like I pooed my pants. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the probably the least agreeable person on earth. And that could be detrimental to your trading. So it's it's a it's definitely a discovery within when it comes to trading. Now, along the lines of what Mr. Sheldon was saying, and somewhere in here he goes, No, I think I might have it in a in an upcoming slide, but Number 147773, you need to ask yourself these two questions. What's the psychology of the market? Okay. When I saw Bitcoin making 90 something thousand this morning, I'm like, okay, what's the psychology there? Well, there's some buyers. Okay. And there's a lot of probably FOMO coming into the market. So you kind of have to wrap your head about what's going on with these players. And, and if it, there's a stock that looks like electric cardiogram, well, there's a lot of people want to buy, a lot of people want to sell it. Probably institutions feeding it to them. I mean, who knows? But you could, kind of get a feel for what the psychology of the market is. And the more important question is, what is your own psychology? Like in the, the I guess Spock had died and then they brought him back or whatever. And he's taking his little, um, his little test to like re-educate his brain to see how smart he is. And they're asking him all, it's asking him all his questions. It looks like an old, um, like what's those old video game machines? Like an old Space Invaders machine, you know, bad tech. <laughs> Low res graphics and, and asking them all these, uh, they could travel the speed of light, but the graphics suck. <laughs> and they're asking him, it's asking him all these questions. These he's rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire. And one of them is, How do you feel? And then he, could, he couldn't answer that one because of his logic brain and everything. And he kept working through the others. But that's 
That's an important thing. You know, what's your own psychology? As I preach, there's so many extraneous influences when it comes to trading. We just got a new puppy. We, we lost a dog a few weeks back, a few months back, and that was really hard on us. And, and so that, that affects you, okay? We got a new puppy, so that affects our sleep. Um, you know, market's closing, puppy's got to go out today. It's like, ah, so it's like that's that's messing with things. And that's kind of an obvious thing. And in some cases, it's it's maybe not so obvious, okay? But all this little stuff adds up that's going on in your life. So what's going on with your own psychology? Did you just make a lot of money trading and you feel like just frittering, frittering away because you're lottery rich? Or did you just lose a lot of money trading and you're afraid to take this next opportunity? And the list goes on and on and on. But um, as I preach a fight with a spouse, significant other, or both, that could really mess with your trading. Anyway, uh, this is early in the book, first page or two. Like I said, you, you start reading this and you're gonna, you'll be quoting it too. The psychological aspects of speculation may be considered from two points of view, equally important. One question is, what effect do varying mental attitudes of the public have upon the course of prices? How is the character of the market influenced by psychological conditions, okay? So think about that. What are people thinking? Okay, well, I woke up and I'm looking at Bitcoin. It's at all time highs. Anyone who has ever bought a piece of Bitcoin or any Bitcoin, whatever, is at a profit with the exception of the person who just bought it five minutes ago. Okay, so that's obviously a strong market. And, you know, who are the players? Okay. It's, you got something like GME when it goes crazy. You've got hedge funds getting squeezed out, getting punished. You got all these little kids uh, just throwing this money at it. All these crazy things happening. Okay. A second consideration is how does the mental attitude of the individual trader affect his chances of success? To what extent and how can he overcome the obstacles placed in his pathway? By his own hopes and fears, his timidities, timidities, I, I guess I've got to be careful how I say that word, and obstinacies. So I think it means that if you're timid and obstinate, these uh, these old books, they do have a lot of flowery, uh, like sophistries is somewhere in here. I've never, um, I've never heard of that word until reading one of these old books. But anyway, right there, it's kind of like where I, I came up with this with this question um, a few weeks ago or a few days ago, whatever, and then I read Selden, and it's right there in Selden. So good stuff, and I strongly urge you to read it. Uh, and it's so, you know, it's a one-sitter, nice little book.